everyone. Welcome to the weekly Baseball Brew Crew podcast. We're keeping baseball history alive one craft beer at a time. Wherever you're watching or listening to us, please give us a like and a follow. And if you love beer with your baseball, please tell a friend. Here is the lineup card for today. Let's get at it. First, he is the field correspondent and senior research analyst at the Baseball Brew Crew. It is Kevin Lyon. Welcome. Great to be here and great to be leading off and not having to follow the powerhouse. That's your new nickname, Cowboy Jack Durango. I just called, gave you another one. We'll add that to the list. <laughs> powerhouse. I could have said the brick house, but I, I don't know about bricks. I, I went to find out. Is there bricks in there, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, wow anyways, exactly anyways we're having a good time i got got great beer and i got uh some fun cards open up tonight sounds good sounds good up next is the goodwill ambassador and the sultan of swig at the baseball brew crew it is cowboy jack durango when i step out the front door in the morning boys they all scream at the top of their lungs Woo! Who's causing all this? It's your boy, Cowboy Jack Durango. Cheers. Welcome to the show. Let him hear it. Yes. And I, I love the uh, white on white uh, Cincinnati Reds uh, lid that you got on there. Uh, Cincinnati, like actually, um, we're, we don't talk a lot about current baseball a lot, but Cincinnati looking pretty good these days. My, my Reds are looking good. This is the hat that Pete Rose uh, wears pretty much all the time nowadays. He was wearing this hat in uh, the cameo and uh, that you guys got for me. Thanks again. And uh, my son, I just I wouldn't pull the trigger because uh, the MLB shop was trying to charge me fifteen dollars for shipping, and I would just like refuse to pay for it. But I would just always stare at it longingly, just oh, I want that. And then over Mother's Day, they had free shipping Mother's Day, which uh, so I jumped all over it and got got my lid, man, looking fresh. Nice, nice. Looking it looks. Good, really I good. like it. You're taking advantage of the Ladies' Day. Good job. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I know how to make Mother's Day work in my favor, boys. Right. <laughs> Take care of those mothers, Cowboy Jack Durango. Hey, yeah, I'm the Jack biggest Jack. mother you guys know. Come on, man. <laughs> Indeed. Watch your mouth. You know what they're talking about, Jack. <laughs> well, my name is Michael Mondragon, your humble host for the festivities tonight. As tradition on the show, we always bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. So what are you drinking tonight? I'm going to start with Kevin Lyon, uh, a twofer, if you will. This is a doubleheader tonight. So for tonight, I have not one. I have two beers because they're both collaborations by two San Diego breweries, Coronado Brewing and Society Brewing. First is a simply named Society Coronado Double IPA Collab. Simple as you get for a name, which is 8.5% ABV and no IBU. Bold citrus notes explode from experimental extracts like a smooth ride in a land yacht through the hop farms of the Pacific Northwest. I will add the featured hops here are Citra, Simcoe, and HBC 586. Nice. So let's see what we got next. This is the Mariner, a double IPA at 8% and no IBU. As they say in the craft beer world, a rising tide lifts all boats. Maybe that's why collaborations in a coastal city like San Diego are so popular. This collab is just what you expect from the breweries that brought you local favorites like Weekend Vibes and The Pupil. The Mariner is brewed with Citra, Mosaic, Simcoe, El Dorado, and Azuka hops, creating a delightfully hoppy IPA filled with flavors of tropical stone fruit and floral aromas of citrus and pineapple. Oh, well, it's going to be a good night, boys. <laughs> yeah, you have two beers because you're going to be using one for your pint and pack segment. But um, I wanted to uh, mention that I was just at Petco Park uh, this past weekend, uh, seeing the Rays and Padres play. And both of these breweries were featured um, there and they, uh, among, uh, there was actually by like 10 or 12 more of them. Uh, so it was really super hard to choose. And I did see the pupil uh, from yes. Society Brewing, mm -hmm. and uh, they had a, a whole they had a whole uh, Coronado Brewing uh, booth, and like right. uh, I mean, like it is a a wealth uh, of just just yeah. greatness when it comes to craft beer in San Diego. Yeah, for myself, like Weekend Vibes is a is will be could be one of the regulars I would buy. Yep. Trader Joe's, you're there locally that you get a six pack pints of like a good solid six point seven uh 
it's either 6.7 or 7% uh, IPA, and it's like $14 for a six pack. Six pack six pints. Pack. So I'm like, six pack yeah, of uh, pints. Yeah. So I'm like, that's a sweet deal. And I like taking advantage of that. Like Coronado. They've actually had beers in the past Angel Stadium. I don't know recently if they have. I still I haven't seen it recently. But it's great to see two breweries like this just come together. And right now I'm having the the uh, Society Coronado Double IPA, and it's def it's it's definitely a good uh, lunch beer, Jack. I'll tell you that right now. At eight point five, it's a good look. It's got it's in the IBU, but it's got a pretty good little like look some hops to it. It's not for the amateurs, definitely not. But I like it. I definitely like it a lot. Yeah. And, uh, I, I let me add to um, I want I got something that I just found out from doing a little bit of research here. So um, society has been around since uh, 2012, and the idea is that beer is the world's greatest social uniter. So I, I you have to do that, and uh, they do have a rally cry on all their beers that say "Beer Folk Unite," and we yes. always unite, of course, for every recording here for the Baseball Brew Crew podcast. And Coronado Brewing is actually started in 1996 as a brew pub on Coronado Island. So they've been around 27 years. How about that? And check this out. This tells you how much things change. At that time in 1996, it was one of five breweries in San Diego in 1996. Wow. So now there's probably like a hundred in San Diego. Yeah. And if you go to the greater metropolitan area in San Diego, my gosh, it's probably like maybe even double that if you include the ocean side. Oh, we've all left the ocean side area. Isn't right. it illegal to sell macro beers in, in San Diego now? It's uh <laughs> Yeah, there 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 has to be. I mean they they <laughs> and well, everybody just collapse and then they just build it and uh, they're just yeah. like, please, well, more, more, please. <laughs> well, hey, uh Michael Monjak, that might explain why the stone location was closed outside of Echo Park. Yeah, I just happened yeah. to wander out behind there and uh I, I knew that there was I, I just wanted to head in and see if if I could get a, a quick one before I I walked back to my hotel and uh lo and behold it was no longer there i think it was a victim of uh probably covid and and uh is it just an empty space it's an it just completely just empty space now wow. yeah and and if they i mean if they actually brewed there i would think there'd be a brewery that want to take over that space because we've seen a lot of breweries that take over defunct ones because the tanks are already there and things like that there's some really good breweries that's come around because of that yeah, I seem to think that that was a tap room, so it, mm. it didn't have the actual brewing equipment. Right. But I don't know. I, I again, I it's it was kind of sad to see, but it was it yeah. was one of those one that was tucked away. You didn't really know it was there. Um, it's it's similar to the one here in Pasadena, where if you didn't know it was there, it's right off the uh, right off the train, uh, the metro train right there. But um, yeah. it's kind but of hey, we could say Sapporo owns them now, so you know, judge it how you will. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, but yeah, I have, I actually, I gifted you, uh, that first one, but I have not yes. had this. So I look forward to if I can, uh, uh, uh that was it. a Trader I'm, Joe one too. I saw a single and I'm like, I got this eventually. It's been in my fridge for a while. And then I'm like, dude, I got two collaborations by the same breweries, both double IPAs. It's gonna be a fun Tuesday, gentlemen. <laughs> Fantastic. So Great one. Thank you for that. All right, Jack, you are up. My craft beer for tonight is La Luna the Moon, quadruple hazy IPA by Dark Sky Brewing Company, brewed in lovely Flagstaff, Arizona. It's a 12% ABV and a 30 IBU. This beer is the last batch of Dark Sky's eighth anniversary IPAs, and it's a doozy. A dangerously smooth and easy drinking quad hazy with Yakima Chief Citra hops, Citra Cryo Hops, Mosaic, Mosaic Cryo, and Simcoe all dry hopped to make this lovely quad hazy IPA. Aromas tickle the senses with mango, ripe tangerines, subtle peach, and a sticky, sticky dankness. A pillowy soft mouthfeel reveals deep hints of citrus grove flavor, tropical fruit salad, peach ring gummies, and a dank piney finish. Boys, I had a dark sky triple hazy recently, and I said it was the easiest drinking triple I've ever had. You wouldn't be able to tell this is a quadruple hazy or a 12 percenter. This is, this is the Mike Tyson of beers, uppercut out of nowhere. Good night, Irene. Bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow a quad and I, I, I don't think I, I actually put this down as a q ipa which i, I I've, I've done t ipa but i don't yeah, think I we've never had a quad on I, the show. i've never had a quad i don't think it wow. is so easy drinking i mean it's got that hazy 
orange juice look that we like. It's low IBUs, so it's not bitter. It is and peach ring gummies, man. If you it tastes like peach ring gummies mixed with tropical fruit. It is right up my alley. Wow. It's the 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 good brothers over at Cactus Tap Room uh, pointed me in this direction, and this is going to be a clubhouse leader. I'm <laughs> I'm uh, this for beer of the year. Uh, sadly, it's a it's a one time use, but or a one time batch, but. This might be might be the beer of the year, and that's wow. interesting because that other one you had from Dark Sky with uh, Kitsune a couple weeks ago that you was saying that was like your beer of the year then. So Dark Sky is really coming up there for you, man. Dark Sky, what a secret gem here in Arizona is. I mean, my beer guy says it's the second best brewery in Arizona, and Renhouse, you got some competition, boys. Oh, wow, wow! I just may it is. Yeah, we may have to make a trip up there. Is that sounding like a? There's a whole bunch of breweries there, and yes, uh, I think we need to do a, some hopping around Flagstaff together, boys. Absolutely! Wow, awesome, and a twelve percent as well. Twelve so. percenter. <laughs> yeah, I, as soon as this show ends, I'm going to be Ubering over to the Cactus Tap Room to buy more. <laughs> I this is and how far is do you live from? Good. How far do you live from there, Jack? Uh, like like four, a mile? Four, four blocks? Yeah, maybe a mile. <laughs> <laughs> it is there, it's Arizona in June, so I imagine it's like 114 degrees, right? Kevin, after this easy drinking 12 percenter, I wouldn't trust myself to walk a mile. Oh. <laughs> always thinking. Always yeah. thinking this guy. Nice. Right. Oh, that's so good. Awesome. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us. That's a great one. So my craft beer for tonight is the 12th anniversary double IPA by Smog City Brewing out of Torrance, California. It's an 8.3 ABV and no IBU listed. This beer was crafted with Citra Cryo, Centennial, and Strata Hops for an incredible IPA experience that absolutely shines with tropical mango, candied lemon, and devilish gummy bear sweetness. Yeah, so we're, we're on the gummy bear train. Oh, uh, man, it appears. I missed uh, out. <laughs> you did. You did. did. Did you not get the memo, dude? No, should I get it? I, I mean, I could probably get a gummy from somewhere here in my apartment, but I don't think that should be a good thing either. <laughs> Drop it in the beer ski. Let's do it. Let's turn it into a party. <laughs> Yeah, Smog City is, um, and and I, we've talked about this um, many times on the show. Is it's it's one of the first craft breweries I kind of knew about because when we went down to like the Torrent area, there's this little section. Um, actually, uh, Kevin and I we were going to uh, a brewery called Dudes Brewing, and uh, Kevin had a Groupon, and, <laughs> and this that's group, how long ago this was. This a Groupon. Groupon, and we went down there, and it was this. This Groupon was so good that we walked, not only had great like uh, flights and just really great time there, but we walked out with more beer we, and, and, and mugs and all, nice. everything. It was, it was a fantastic Groupon. That, yeah, it tells you how Guys, long. That is smart shopping. And if there's one <laughs> thing I, I know from being a 40-year-old married man, smart shopping is sexy. So yes. well done. Yes. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and so... In that area are some fantastic breweries, Smog City being one of them. And then literally across the street, that's where Monkish is. Uh, there was another one that's uh, escaping me right now that'll come back to me at some point. But there was another one called Strand Brewing that's down there. Um, I don't know what, I don't even know how many of these are still there because I don't think the dudes are yeah. there anymore. I'm going to say, yeah, I mean, obviously we know the Smog City is still around and, and Smog City has expanded since then and Monkish is around. I'm not sure about the strand though. Strand there might was, not be there. Um, there was another one around there that was like astro, had like an astronomy theme or something yes, like that. Yes, yes, right? that's what I, I was trying to think around. of. Yeah, yeah I don't think they're around anymore. Like that, and uh, like literally, you could walk out of Monkish, and if you were just to take it, like just go 20 feet and then take a take a right, you'd be in another brewery. That's how close it was. <laughs> it's crazy. And and then, but the other one that was down there that's no longer there, Kevin, is uh, Phantom Carriage. Oh yeah, that was a that's a couple miles away. That, I I love that place. That was a really yeah. cool spot. Yeah, so yeah. just a great uh, brewery area. Um, the Torrance uh, Carson area. If you um, go down where the L.A. Galaxy play and uh, or the San Diego Chargers actually. Yeah. Uh, or the, the well, not anymore. Not anymore. Not I, anymore. I, 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 I played so in the facility, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. No, and. 
yeah, some some great stuff down there. We we haven't been down there in quite a long time, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> well, we need to find another group on it. Uh, <laughs> <that's cool. laughs> now the last group on we had for beer was not a good one. That that kind of steered me away from that, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, we we had a bad that experience. Is- but uh, wow. we didn't lose much. We didn't lose much on on the transaction. But uh, we 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 got some. I'm ready to deep. hop on Amtrak and go to Flagstaff. Let's do it. Oh, yes. Yes. Heck yeah! Now, now you're now you're talking. Now you're talking. <laughs> you know, you guys can jump on Route 66 and just it goes right to it, Bubba. There you go. Wow, I'm just saying, I can take a train and just you know just relax. Oh <laughs> way. Yeah. You got real. I've been going on trains since the 1800s. All right. I, true. I, I, right? That's that's true, so dude. Faster. Back when I was uh, 130, oh yeah. my god, it would take weeks to get cross country. Yeah. Lo- lo- locomotive travel was invented in your prime, so I can see why you have an affinity for it, Grandpa. Yeah. You know what? Let me tell you something. After you ride in a horse carriage, it takes months to get anywhere. Sure. sure. You're appreciate it. A locomotive. All that's right. A good point. That's a good point. Well, I remember, I remember Kevin telling me one time that he was walking, you know, in a train, you know, he had two beers in his hands and he's walking down and, uh, that darn Babe Ruth, you know, he came through, uh, <laughs> uh him and a Han and everything and had to step aside while the, 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 the great Bambino like, <laughs> carried the party on, onto the other side Why of the train. That up? You, <laughs> I'm sorry, you the one that told me. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't tell you to say, tell that story on the show. I thought this is why we have this show. We can tell it's those a, stories. A tree of trust. <laughs> in, in fairness, uh, to put Kevin over, he did not spill a drop of beer. He, yes, God. yes, and and that twelve year old Babe Ruth remembered Kevin. He did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So let's do it. Let's do this week in baseball history for June 27th all the way to July 3rd. I'm going to start out with a uh, a fun one that we've talked about on previous shows, but I, it bears repeating because this one's fun. June 27th, 1977, after offering the job to Twins legend Harmon Killebrew, the Rangers hire Billy Hunter as a team's manager, making him the club's fourth skipper in a week. Texas had replaced the fired Frank Lucchese with Eddie Stanky, who left after one game due to homesickness, resulting in third base coach Connie Ryan, who refused to assume the position full-time, becoming the interim manager for six games. So can you imagine they had four managers in one week? And I didn't even know, I didn't even realize, I, I should say, that Harmon Killebrew could have been a major league manager and turned it down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's very interesting. <laughs> Is that because he didn't want the job or he realized how bad the Twins were? You know what I mean? I don't know how bad are these teams. Or, or you know, the, the, the Rangers during, let's see, 77. I should say the Rangers, but you know what? Actually, it might be a thing. He might not want to go to Texas. There there seemed no upside of being the manager of the Rangers or being on the Twins at that time. Yeah, either or is a bad situation. I, I want to say if Killebrew's retired by then, I think he actually lived in California, if I remember correctly. Okay. So, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, hang out in California, retire, you're going to travel around as a manager when you probably got made a pretty good amount of money as a, as a ball player. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember these uh, 1977 cards. I love that. Yeah. The, 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 the Hunter, uh, Billy Hunter, uh, as a player, as a manager, I was like, I, I don't even remember Billy Hunter as, as anything, <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I do like we have the Connie Ryan 1952 Tops card up there. That's a nice little touch, too. Yeah. You know what? That's the only picture I could really find of him uh, wow. in any capacity. So, uh, yeah, he was. Yeah. Uh, obviously on the Phillies. Are, are we, are we, are we just not going to acknowledge that in this story, there's a guy named Eddie Stanky. Eddie Stanky. Are, we're just going to, we're going to drive right past Stanky. <laughs> like, <laughs> where yeah. did Stanky come from and where did he go? Where'd you go? Stanky. He went home. He, he went home. Sick. Come I on, mean, Stanky. Something inventor, was going on. The inventor of something the stinky leg. The stanky leg. <laughs> See, what I thought you were going to say, Jack, is because you look at that man up there and say, why is no one talking about Frank Lucchesi? And that's because none of us wants to disappear. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that's what you're talking about. You know. Now, is it Lucchesi or is it Lucchesi? Lucchesi. It's Lucchesi. And oh, it looks like sorry. Lucchesi. I should have known. Yes. I should have known. Yes. And I, yeah. I, I had to like literally write it phonetically so I pronounced oh, okay. it correctly. Lucchesi. I, 
Hopefully the wrong people didn't start watching this. Yes. You might, I might not be here next week if, uh, you know, if, if, if they find <laughs> out. Watch your back as you're walking the train tracks to Radiant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always do, sir. Always do. <laughs> yes. yes. You you really think the mafia could take down a Highlander, dude? Come on, you're fine. <laughs> uh, all right, Kevin, you're up next. All right, we are going to June 28th, 1986. Cleveland knuckleballer Phil Necro and California right-hander Don Sutton become the first pair of 300-game winners to start against each other in this century. Both future Hall of Famers pitching at the seventh inning but neither gets a decision in the Angels' nine to three victory at Anaheim Stadium. Uh, so I, and I, I don't remember if I was at this game. But I was going to a lot of games around this time, but I don't recall off the top of my head being here or not. Just throw that out there. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing that you would have even been close to this game. And, and uh, I was down the street in Anaheim. Wow. So here's my fun, and, I, and I'm so happy you have the photos here. All right, Cowboy Jack Durango, are you ready? Yes. John Sutton on the right in the Angels jersey. How old do you think he is in 1986? In 1986. In that photo, I think that photo would be 86. Don Sutton in 1986 was 42 years old. Very close, sir. 41. Good job. Good oh, job. wow. Wait, wow. what married. month was his birthday? <laughs> it was April. All right. Oh, I April. asked that okay. research. All right. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> All, All right. right. All right. All right. Don't worry. I, I was you. two months off, bro. That's you were not close. bad. No, he turned 42. The fo- He just turned 41. And 41 is what I'm saying. He just turned 41. Ah. All right. So Phil Necro. How old do you think Phil Necro is in, in the, uh, this photo in 1986? Phil Necro is a lot like Arn Anderson, where he looked like he was 50 when he was 20. So <laughs> this is where it gets dangerous. I am going to say Necro was 38 years old. <laughs> You're slightly off. That guy, like, Phil Necro, is 47 years old, and he's playing Major League Baseball. Yeah. Pitching Major Four, League Baseball. Seven. 47. Huh? Yes, sir. 47 right. years old. Well, um, I, what is it with pitchers back in the 80s? They could they could go into their 50s. What's the deal? I mean, I know. That, you have, well, that bum you. Nolan Ryan did it his yep. whole life. And yep. he's the exception because he was a fa- he was a fastball pitcher, and his arm kept held up somehow. Yeah. So, Michael, why don't you explain to, to Jack why him and other guys would be able to pitch that old in their life? Uh, Knuckleball. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, knuckle- you knew that. Good yeah. Job. yeah. Sure. What, yeah. what are you talking to me for? Are you like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I know no, baseball. of course not. They call me Jackie Ball Game, pal. All right? <laughs> yeah, Knuckleball. Sure. Yeah, I, I would contend that the uh, the wear and tear on on – your hand uh, would be just as much as on your arm. I mean, the, yeah. and it, it's, it's a pitch where sometimes you don't even know where it's going. So, and you're like pushing it as well. So yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible that he can do that at, at a high level at, at yeah. this age. It's, it's very impressive. And I would think too, um, Jack, this guy might look familiar to as well, because I, I want to say he's the inspiration for veteran pitcher Eddie Harris in the documentary called uh, Major League, as you say, yes. documentary. he absolutely That's- was the inspiration. Yeah. Yes, yes. So. And we we didn't make mention of this uh, last week, but I talked about um, the the remember the snake around uh, Julio Franco. Yes. that was also uh, kind of yeah. like the in uh, the Major League and and you know Jobu and all that yeah. stuff and, really? and added into that. There's a lot of there's a lot of that. Oh, yeah, man, um, what a great. Piece. Greatest yeah. baseball documentary of all time. <laughs> <laughs> There's also another guy named J- uh, Jamie Moyer who actually mm-hmm. almost, I think he pitched into his fifties. Um, I don't uh, know if he went close to it. It, it. it went pretty close. Yeah. It was very close. And, uh, and, and Joe's brother, Phil, you know, uh, pitched pretty late. In his, he pitched pretty late too. And uh, honestly, he pitched into his forties as well. Yeah. That, yeah. That's definitely not really a thing anymore. Jay Moore is like the last guy who's ever going to pitch in his 40s, probably. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, that's we'll yeah. They, they, I remember like um, Bartolo Colon, I think, is like the only person that's kind of yeah. gotten close, but um, yeah, they <laughs> he, he looks great too. He's he's still working out, still doing anything, and they he will he can't get another yeah. chance. Uh, Adam yeah. Wainwright is um, yeah, is Wainwright's good. up there, Kershaw, and like Verlander are probably some of the older pitchers who yeah. might have a few more years in them. We'll see. Yeah, that'd be it's awesome. I I love old guy stories because it's like it, it's perfect for baseball. Like you don't have to be a certain age or a certain uh, size yeah. to be. I mean, real- come on, Jack. You see this guy at the mound, you're like, okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna clobber this. I'm gonna clobber. No, this. no. Look, 
I got a story, dude. I never underestimate an old dude now. All right. When I was when I was a young man, I uh, I got a little mouthy to an older gentleman that I thought, come on, in a uh, in a bar called the Lariat in Catalina, Arizona, and that old man took me out into the parking lot and beat me like I was his twelve year old son, and <laughs> slapped me around the parking lot of a redneck bar in Catalina to the point where I was like, "You're right, sir. I'm sorry. Wow. You're the man." Wow. Humbled me, humbled me bad, dude. Did he, did he break your back and <laughs> dude? He literally just slapped me around for thirty oh, minutes man. in a parking lot. Jeez. <laughs> God, that no dude this. could he? Oh man, it was it was a rough night. It was humbling, right. but you know what? When you're 21, you got to get humbled once, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh I was like, wow, that's a great side. <laughs> And that's just one of uh, of a dozen stories like that, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm glad, I thought you were talking to me, and I'm like, oh. not of old guys beating me up, dude. Like <laughs> after that, I learned that if an old dude is gonna say, "Let's go out to the parking lot," he can probably handle himself. So you got to strike first, and you got to strike fast. You know, okay. that's why I'm the king of the sucker punch. <laughs> hey, hey, Jack. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's go to the parking lot. <laughs> All right. You first. <laughs> no. So basically from that beating, I didn't learn respect. I learned how to cheap shot somebody to win. <laughs> hey, that's why they call me the champ, daddy. All right. Oh, the champ. Oh, another new name. Jeez. How many nicknames? Ah. Uh. And uh, on that note, let's go to you, Cowboy Jack. You got the next story. June 29th, 1989, the Boise Hawks suspend manager Mal Finchman for one game for returning to the field after being ejected in the sixth inning disguised as the team's mascot, Humphrey the Hawk. The feathery imposter gives instructions to his team for the remainder of the Northwest League contest against Salem. Gentlemen, while I hate mascots, I have to tell you, Mal Finchman now has a special place in my heart. If I could digress and tell you a story from my younger days, I was once ejected from a professional wrestling match. Uh, Mid-match, I was disqualified and escorted out of the building by police officers, and I returned in disguise. I was dressed as a woman. I had on a ball gown, a wig, stockings, high heels. At the time, a young baby-faced cowboy Jack didn't have the beard, so I passed, and I sat in the front row and uh, gave instructions to my my ne'er-do-well teammates for the rest of the show. So, man, me and Mal Finchman, man, we're soulmates. How you doing, Mal? Cheers, brother. I love it. <laughs> Now. Oh, God. Like we said, one of a dozen stories, guys. One of a dozen <laughs> stories. <laughs> this begs the question, you know, it blurs the line between entertainment and reality. Um, sure. <laughs> Listen. As he pours a 12% beer in his glass, yes. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> During the day, I was a mild man, mild mannered shop foreman for a steel yard, and I just so happened to have a wig, a ball gown, fishnet <laughs> stockings, and high heeled shoes in my truck. So for a little quick switch. So yeah, read into it what you will, guys. But what that tells me is Cowboy Jack knows how to party. <laughs> he didn't pull a, a quick switch like Bill Murray robbing a bank. That, that wasn't a good move. Yeah, that's a deep cut. Sorry. Oh, I'm good at this. Oh, so good. So good. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> slam dunk. Uh, I don't. I mean, like we should shut it down right now, but um, we still we still have more. <laughs> I'm sure I have more stories, dude. Awesome. Well, I'm sure awesome. we'll dig them out. We we may have to do a Patreon after dark. Yes, uh, we should. Through after dark, edition. I am still a person of interest in a lot of those stories. So <laughs> let's do it after dark. Well, let's make somebody pay for it if I'm going to go to jail. Dude. <laughs> pay for your bail. As we say at the Baseball Brew Crew, a lot of these uh, statutes of limitations have expired. So uh, no, oh, well, oh, no, oh, oh. still oh, no. a person, still a person of interest. <laughs> In at least I three bet. stories. So I bet. I bet. Moving forward. <laughs> yes. no, we're not talking about those stories. We're talking about June, my birthday, June 30th, Michael Mondragon. What do you got That's for me? Are. 
All right, so let's do it. June 30th, 1908 in New York, Red Sox legend Cy Young hurls his third career no-hitter. June 30th, 1948 in Detroit, Cleveland right-hander Bob Lemon throws the first American nighttime no-hitter. June 30th, 1962 in Los Angeles, Sandy Koufax becomes, becomes the first Dodger left-hander to throw a no-hitter since Knapp Rucker accomplished a feat in 1908. So three all on June 30th, huh? Yes. And and that's what um, I love looking at this because there's, as, as we go down the line of like all these, you know, these day this day in baseball history, uh, whenever I accumulate all the no hitters, it's actually, there's, there's numerous ones on different dates. And uh, this one happened to have three uh, from some pretty prolific pitchers. Uh, obviously one, the Cy Young award is named after the very first one. Um, oh, really? Yes, yeah. you would. You, you, yes. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot of sense, dude. Okay. All right. Yeah, man, I love baseball. What I love baseball is the Easter eggs. You know, the more you learn, there's little Easter eggs. Like I never would have put that together, but there it is, dude. And, and can I add that? Um, thank you for showing me this slide. We only have three Hall of Famers here, but this is a very important thing for me because I was at all three of these games. <laughs> From my birthday. <laughs> my 107th birthday was 1908. <laughs> my 147th birthday was Bob Lemon in 1948. And my 161st birthday was watching, you know, Mr. Sandy Koufax, Mr. Sandy no Hitter. So yes. thank you, Michael. Yeah, my pleasure. My, my pleasure. I'm really impressed that you could do that math. So quickly. I know that's even more impressive than than yeah. uh, does, does anything. Does any, anything even more impressive than my uh, bringing up the Cy Young Award. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's your birthday on the thirtieth? Yes, sir. Oh, whoops. So, where will you be on uh, June thirtieth, uh, twenty twenty three? I will be in Vancouver. It's the- you. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be in Vancouver seeing some baseball, and okay. I'm going to hopefully see my fourth no hitter on my birthday. Oh, oh that, that would be great. cool, man! Let's hope that can happen, Ooh. right? Let's hope that can happen. happen. You never know. So you're I'm just, going to you're games. Just, you're just going in and out for a ball game. You're not hanging around in Canada, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm going to be in Canada. I'm Canada for a week, sir. Yes. Oh. Yes. By the time people are when this show premieres, I will be in Toronto, Canada, for a few days. So I'll just nice, dude. Good for you. Right on. And I might be hiding from the Lucchesi family. There you, there you go. <laughs> Are you going to go to Calgary at all? No, sir. Just uh, Toronto and Vancouver. Well, greetings to the Mountie. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Jean Pierre you know, Lafique. What's the other you know, guy's name? Yeah. Um, but, um, PCO. Jacques Rougeau. Oh, Jacques yeah. Rougeau and PCO. Yes. Bar- whatever his name is. Mr. Ouellette. Yeah, Edouard Carter- Carpartier. There we go. Yes. There Ooh, you go. Wow. Deep pull. Yeah, that's, cool. yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's, a, that's for the old folks. But yeah. I'll tell you now, though, for the last 60 years, since 1962, I've been going to a game every day on my birthday, hoping to see another hitter, and it hasn't happened yet. So hopefully this time on the 61st anniversary, I can finally get another note. Perfect. Love it. Love it. All right. So, Kevin, you are up. All right. July 1st, 1990, as Comiskey Park celebrates its 80th birthday, Yankee pitcher Andy Hawkins throws a no hitter against the White Sox, but loses the game four to nothing. The right hander is not credited with an official no hitter because the home team doesn't need to bat in the bottom of the ninth inning. Yeah. So, um, Kevin, have you, <clears throat> excuse me, have you seen this game? I don't recall seeing this game, but I had to hashtag, I had to look up a little bit into it. And one thing I'll add to this that makes this even more interesting this is the last time, this is the last game the Yankees ever played at Comiskey Park. Oh, wow. Done, yeah, it was done in this game. Yes. Not the first time a guy lost with getting a no no, but in, obviously in this case, it turned out not being a no no, but it's definitely one of the more interesting ones for sure. Yeah. I actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this game is actually on YouTube. Um, it's actually the full game, either that or MLB um, in some capacity. But anyway, I've, I've watched this game. And do you know what happened during this game that kind of made how he lost is it was a really windy day. So a lot of the, uh, there's a lot of errors in this game. I have all, I have all the notes. I have the notes at the inning. So crazy too was through the first like five or maybe six innings, 
it was a no hitter on both sides. Both right. pitchers were getting no hitters for part of the game. Right. So it was no score. So it, he had, to, and then the eighth inning, he got the first two batters out, and um, this young kid, Sammy Sosa, came up and reached first base on an error by by the third baseman on the uh, you know on the Yankees. So then um, Andy Hogs up walking the next two batters, uh, and then the so base is loaded, no score. Up comes American hero Robin Ventura, Cowboy Jack Durango. Hopefully you remember yes. who he is. Good, you remember who yes. he is. Good job. And he actually hit. You mentioned what happened about this about the wind. He had a ball that you know was misjudged by the outfielder, and it 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 glanced off his glove and ended up being a two base error. And it actually all scored. The, it cleared the bases. All three runs scored. So three unearned runs on an error. So it technically, it's not a hit. And it was. Three nothing, and then um, I think we had another error where a guy lost a ball in the sun. Yeah, I think it's like the ball dropped. Like yeah, Jesse Barfield like misplayed a, misplayed a ball hit, and the ball just dropped. And Rob Ventura scored, and it was four nothing. Yeah, no, no, yeah, four four runs on a no hitter. That's rough. It's so it's so odd. And he yeah. he pitched really great, and it was just like those just those miscues. Uh, put it and, over, and yeah, and in the end, they end up not making it a no hitter. And a pair, and a couple of years later, they actually had an emergency meeting with uh, Faye Vincent, the commissioner of baseball, where they determined that a no hitter has to be a complete game, like nine innings. You know, so yeah, that's how they determined. Like, nope, this doesn't count because he didn't pitch a complete game. And that's you true. know, it won't be the first. It's not the, like I said, it's not the first time that a guy actually lost a game about getting a hit. It's kind of crazy that that's happened a few times. Over yeah. The years. Yeah, I think it, uh, it happened recently. I thought. Um, okay. I'm not sure if it's happened since 1990 off the top of my head. I I want to say that it was during 2020. Somebody, uh, someone did a, a, a similar thing. You might want to check this because. Um, oh, I think it was Bad Bunny. No. Oh. <laughs> Bad- Actually, I have a question for Jack. You were saying you're a person of interest in some stories. You know nothing about that headline on the top of the Daily News, there, do you? Okay. Thank you. I was waiting for somebody to see that. For those of you listening, uh, it's a cover of the Daily News, and it says, Man hurls tot, tot, T-O-T, from rooftop. Now, uh, this might have been the Michael Mondragon story had I not gotten out of uh, – in 1990, I would have been 20 years old, so I got out of there. Um, but, yeah, that might have been the Michael Mondragon story. <laughs> like, okay. So- <laughs> Listen, but hey, to hey, all hey. the parents out there, <laughs> tell me that you haven't been in public with your kid throwing a fit, <laughs> losing their mind, screaming and kicking, and something just snaps in your head. And you're like, you know, I could throw this kid off the top of the building. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? Like, that's a completely normal thought to have as a parent to act on it is yeah. when it's wrong. Okay. <laughs> right. you, I mean, guys, you know what it was? All it was is a guy with the top of his thought threw a tater tot off the side. That's ah, see, it's, it's a false lead. Ah, yeah. that's, that's. I don't know for sure. That I mean, considering I, I filmed some things off rooftops in my life. Yes. Yeah. Things. I, I, I might, you know, it could be a tot, a tater tot. Sure. It, it, right? It's, it's kind of sure. like dog bites man. Yes. yes. Right. I gotcha. So gotcha. I, I will follow up what you're asking me. Yeah. Last year, it happened to the Cincinnati Reds. That's the what it was. Time in Major League history, Hunter Green pitched a no hitter and lost the game. Yes. So yes. That's the sixth time in Major League history that's happened. Hunter okay, so. Green. Yep. Uh, is, is he on the Chicago Cup? He's on the. I don't know. No. Last year he was on the Reds. Nope. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> nope. I had a feeling it was for the Reds. I didn't know if it was against them or, but it was. Yeah, that, yeah. I remember that. While I'm re- wearing a Reds hat and yeah. Hunter Green, it's Hunter Green, fan. he was <laughs> on. You're talking my about loss. Jack does not remember losses team. or throwing a tot off a rooftop. <laughs> he doesn't remember these things. Hunter Green was on my fantasy team last year. All right. Jeez, <laughs> I am an but idiot. But hey. an idiot. <laughs> Oh, an idiot who won the championship, all right? That's right. That's, That's true. Yeah. Hunter Green, shout out, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who am I thinking of, dude? Who's the guy on the Cubs? Uh, Hunter. Uh, nobody, nobody Hunter for the Cubs. I don't yeah, know. no, it's Marcus Stroman. Way off. It's I Stroman. was way off. I'm going to get Hunter Green out of Marcus Stroman. 
I thought you uh, there's uh, sounds like a magic trick. There's like, how, do you, how do I get a hundred green out of Marcus Stroman? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you how. Twelve percent quadruple hazy IPA. <laughs> hey yo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, stop. Oh, oh that's boy. right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, Jack, let's parlay this into another This Day in Baseball. July 2nd, 1963, in one of baseball's most memorable pitching duels, San Francisco Giants right-hander Juan Marichal and Milwaukee Braves, Milwaukee Braves lefty yep. Warren Spahn. Yep. That just broke my brain. Milwaukee Braves lefty <laughs> Warren that. Spahn hurled 15 scoreless innings. Willie Mays ends the marathon homering off of Spawn in the bottom of the 16th to give San Francisco a one to nothing win. Yeah. When Wait, were they the Braves? They, Apparently they, in 1963, but how did I miss that? They, you they weren't were the around. Po- I was. You know. <laughs> yeah. They were the Boston Braves, yes. and then they, they went to Milwaukee. And, and they then, went to Atlanta. And they went to Atlanta. Yeah. So this is right before that. I think they went but, to Atlanta. But did you hear what he said? When did – what – Okay, he said Willie Mays hit a home run off Warren Spahn in the, the game, one nothing in what inning? The, in the, the 16th. 16th. Yeah. So Warren Sweet Spahn 16. 16 innings. Yep. Sure. And took the loss. And, and took the one loss, nothing. dude. Did one the nothing. J-O-B, dude. <laughs> one nothing. Jeez. <laughs> Brother almost went Broadway and then did the job. Oh, Warren, yeah. what are you almost doing? double Broadway. Jeez. That's like the two-hour time limit, you know? It's like a Texas death match. It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And and they both had very storied leg kicks, as you can see here. Yes. So rock head, rock head level. That day. Yeah. Guys, let me ask you a question. So they went 16 innings, and Willie Mays, one of the best to ever do it, couldn't hit off spawn. He had to wait for 16 innings for spawn to tire out. Like that's a hoss, dude. Those guys were putting in some work, as yeah. the kids say. Oh yeah, and, and this this surprised me because I this wouldn't happen today oh, because God, no. um, they wouldn't sacrifice their starting the starting pitcher for um, one game to really? win one game. I should say it wouldn't happen these days because ah, it doesn't fit in the spreadsheet apparently right like well, it's all it's again it's all analytics and stuff like that they sure. rather you know and and especially like well how how would they do it like even like when bullpens are taxed now they put in position players to pitch i mean that didn't happen back back then it was very very rare all right so i'm having, i'm got i i'm looking up the box score yeah willie mays but that home run was one of six that that was his sixth at bat, and that was his only hit of the game. Wow. See, now I was going to ask him what, is, uh, what he went that game. Yeah. So Juan Marichal went 16 innings, eight hits, four walks, 10 strikeouts. 16 wow. innings. Wow. And Warren Spawn pitched 15 in the third because he gave up the home run in the bottom of the 16th. Gave up nine hits, one walk, two strikeouts. So I can't, I don't see a pitch count here, but wow, that's just interesting too. And what, what is interesting, what's actually interesting too, is that um, Warren Spawn actually got double up in this wow. game. He actually wow. almost won the game for himself. He went one of six of a double. <laughs> well, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, it's kind of crazy just, you know, just seeing that. And you got a lot of Hall of Famers in this game. You, got, you have Hank Aaron in this game, went 0 for 6. Eddie Matthews, a home run, as a, went 0 for 2, and he got substituted. You have two Hall of Famers there. Like I said, Warren Spawn batted one for six. Uh, Willie Mays, like I said, one for six, the home run. You got Willie McCovey went one of six. Hall of Air, Atlanta Cepeda, two of six. I mean, there's some fantastic batters in this game, you know, yeah. and, and pitchers. And just listen to that box score. It's still so there's a whole book about this game. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it, it's one of the greatest uh, pitched games ever. And they, they there's actually a book about it that you can get off Amazon. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And it's... I, again, it's 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 kind of inconceivable that yeah. that this game. So, now, let me add let me add two more quick things about this, and we can wrap this up. So this game, the attendance for this game was a was only fifteen thousand nine hundred twenty one. Wow! And this sixteen inning game went four hours and ten minutes. Oh, <laughs> well that that's that's. I mean, that's half the time of uh, one of the 
World Classic games. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Went to World Baseball Classic games this year. Yes, I, I, I went to a game that was like the seventh inning went four hours. For sure. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, the 16 inning game here that went that long. You know, interesting. Well, I mean, the game, the games that I just went to in San Diego, like they were uh, like about two and a half, maybe two forty five, mm-hmm. and uh, they went. I, again, I'm I love baseball, so like I'd spend four hours there. Sure. Without without question, right? Yeah. But everybody was loving the fact that it was under three hours. Short form content, Daddy. I mean, that's yeah. where it's at. So who do we have here on the left of the screen? That would be so Warren Spawn's on the left. Yeah. And Brian right, so on the right. If you showed me that picture and told me it was from a Hollywood movie, I would say that is Michael Rappaport. <laughs> there you go. All right. We've talked, you, we've talked about Warren Spawn a lot in the show, but we've never had the Michael Rappaport. Comparison. No, not a bit. More, First more time Jimmy for Durante everything. Than, than uh, Michael Rappaport. But. Oh, that's right. He was Jimmy Durante. Yes. That was Jack. That's yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, again, this 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 game is is absolutely incredible. Inning. What's the name of that book? I, you know, I don't um it's like maybe the, the greatest game the greatest pitch, pitch game ever or something like something to that effect. I'll yeah. Look it up. Yeah, you Ooh, should definitely yeah. look it up. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go to uh the final this day in baseball. July third, nineteen thirty six. San Diego minor leaguer Ted Williams pinch hitting for the pitcher in the seventh inning in a game against the Angels gets the first professional hit a long single off the right field fence at LA's Wrigley Field off Glenn Babbler. The 17 year old Padres player stays in the Pacific Coast League contest to replace the pitcher he batted for retiring the side in order but to be removed from the mound in the next frame when he gives up two home runs. That's right. Ted Williams was a 17-year-old minor leaguer in the Pacific Coast League for San Diego. And if you know uh, anything about uh, San Diego Padres history, and uh, again, I was at the Petco Park this weekend. Ted Williams is a big part of uh, their history and getting them. I remember... I, I think it was uh, maybe when the when the Padres first started. Uh, Ted Williams was uh, involved in it, and he didn't he start as a manager, Kevin, as of the. I don't remember off the top of my head. He just, they were the supposed to go to Washington. He was managing Washington. He was definitely managing Washington at some point. Because th- during that time, they were supposed to go to San Diego. In, in fact, like they oh, even, yeah, they yeah, even yeah, had okay. baseball cards that said uh, uh, National League or something like that. It was like it was. Uh, and then- I wonder what kind of deal got made because they ended up going to the Rangers. The Sanders became the Rangers. Right. So there, there, he was involved in a lot of the stuff about bringing them to San Diego. But he, he's a part of uh, San Diego baseball history. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, also, there's a Ted Williams like highway um, in San really? Diego as well. Yeah. So he, uh, again, the Pacific Coast League, uh, for those who don't know, uh, was a, it's a storied baseball league. That, um, you know, uh, when I was a, a kid, uh, the Phoenix Giants, a part of the Pacific Coast League, the Calgary uh, Boomers or what was it uh, Calgary? Um, well, yeah, I think it was the Boomers, uh, the Edmonton Trappers. There, there are so many like amazing uh, teams huh. during that time. So, yeah, there is a Ted Williams. There is a Ted Williams Parkway. It looks like it's part of like the California 56, which I believe. I, I think that's somewhere south of Del Mar. If I'm okay. going to hear the of it. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Because that might be the area he grew up. He might, because he is from the San Diego area. He was from the San Diego area. So, like, if I do a quick Ted Williams freeway, I love Ted Williams freeway, San Diego. I'm like, bam, there there it is. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so funny. You just find this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a cool south of San Diego off of Highway uh, 56, which I'm not exactly sure where that goes to because it looks like it just goes it's uh, like northern san diego like a little south of del mar if you want to see it and take a photo of the sign you know you can right, see that right i think the the like the del mar fair is over there uh yeah you would go yeah it looks like it's an exit a little south of that and the, the 56 right. and you just take that through. yeah yeah and and uh so I, I i said i was just in san diego and i love san diego so much and uh there's a right. lot like, a lot of storied baseball history and uh yeah ted williams played there at 17. 17. Somebody should have gave 
uh, young 17 year old Ted Williams a sandwich because that kid was. <laughs> we need to put some meat on them bones, kiddo. He, he, right? he got it. He got some meat <laughs> on those bones. He yes, was fine. He did. Yeah, it was he 1936. Did. He didn't have the. The you know the advantages that other ball players have in future generations. He had beer, bro. <laughs> he excuse me, seventeen. He's not drinking beer. It's so nineteen thirty-six, dude. Come on, who's not who's who's stopping a seventeen-year-old kid from drinking beer? Me, because I want it. <laughs> That's a good point. So, Kevin, like, okay, so yes, four, like four, maybe six years after this, what uh, was it? Uh, four or six years after this, he was uh, in in a war, right? Yeah, because he, uh, the, I mean, technically the war would have started around the end of 41, early 42, 41, at, you yeah. know, because Pearl Harbor was December 7, 41. Whoa, Ted Williams was in Vietnam? <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> I'll send you a story later about, uh, oh, no, I, got, I hope I'm right on this, that Ted Williams visited some troops and Pete Rose t- t- told a story about seeing him in the shower. I don't. I might be mixing Ted oh, Williams and Joe DiMaggio. Oh yes. Up. Oh, that's right. Is it Joe DiMaggio or is it, wow. or is it Ted Williams? I think, it's, I think it's Joe DiMaggio. Ah, it is Joe DiMaggio. Ah, oh. uh, but you know what? You you got your ball right. players gimmicks mixed up, dude. <laughs> yes. But yes. Both men were good for our country. All right. Yes. <laughs> Ted Williams served in World War II. We've talked about that before. We've shown some beautiful photos of him before. You know, go through our archives. You can find out more about his time serving our military. Yes. Losing like four, three or four years at the peak of his career, and he still is one of the greatest hitters of all time. That's right. And and I think we should add that Pete Rose story to their our after dark <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a funny one. It's definitely a funny it's, one. It's something else. Uh, uh, so but good. Bef- before we move on for everyone joining us on the, the video podcast on YouTube, <laughs> in this picture, there's a gentleman with some glasses on. And that guy's gonna haunt my dreams. Like, what? Oh, who is man. who is this Elmer Fudd serial killer looking dude right here? Who is this? <laughs> yeah, there you are. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> That's a wabbit. Uh, <laughs> this is a scary looking dude. Yeah. I guarantee you, he wrote at least two manifestos in his life. <laughs> I'm <just> free. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, this <laughs> this team picture is is a, what in nineteen thirty six. It's sometimes better than the pictures I got like of this year. Sure, like, it's, it's an amazing picture. Sure, it's super it is. crisp and the everything. Clarity is amazing. The clarity is insane. The depth um, of field. I mean, oh it is. Yeah. I sometimes get the, the some like for, <laughs> some of the pictures I get from even like 2010 is like not even close to this. Are you right? Serious? It looks like garbage. <laughs> garbage. Totally. Totally. All right. So we are going to move on to a segment that we have not done in quite a while, uh, but I really, really, really enjoy. It is Pine and Packs with Kevin Lyon. And uh, Kevin, I want you to open. Um, is is it 1990? Don- yes, I have 1990 Donruss. So just real quick, to, for people who didn't collect cards back in the 80s and even in this point, 1990, um, this was the end of the peak of what was called you know, the wax junk era, where there were so many cards. People were investing so much money in these cards. Like literally, it'd be like, you can buy 10,000 of this certain person's cards for like two cents a piece. And you're like, you're going to buy this and you're going to be set for life. Not realizing... There's millions of these cards out there. Everyone has them. You know, that that thought did not go through people people investing in cards in the 1980s. I should have known. I didn't. I should have known better. I lost about <laughs> $7.4 million. In, I mean, oh, wow. <laughs> I really well, did. Before you get started, yeah. uh, I want to add on to that. The fact that we have wax packs in 2023 of yeah. these, that tells you how many cards there are of all these. Exactly. Things. And no, right, oh, packaged, yeah. like packaged wax packs. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not talking just in the wax pack. I'm talking in plastic, like hanger. Yes, in hanger packs, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It yeah, is. Yeah, because I've opened a variety of things for the years, and people save this stuff. I'm like, you can still buy boxes of these cards in the 80s. For, and now I'm like, geez, like the price for some of these packs now are cheaper than probably, probably eight in like 1989, 1990. It's true. You're crazy. It's true. Yeah. And, and the, way crazy. That the, the way that the hobby is going now, like all the prices are up. All this stuff is super affordable. It's like like a dollar, two dollars. It's like it's it's a lot more fun to me now to get all this stuff. Yeah. But Kevin, I, I, while Let you open, open up that beer, yes. yeah, open up that beer. Yes. I, I I want to um 
I want to give you this challenge. So I want you to open up these cards, but feel free to at any point uh, pick a card and um, you know let's let's challenge Cowboy Jack. Let's challenge myself to uh you know hey what do you know about this guy and uh let's let's see if we can do that yeah yes so let me give a quick introduction to the 1990 don russ so in the peak of the wax era i'm not going to talk about you know in the 80s it was fleer tops and don russ which we're today as don russ don russ and fleer weren't as big as tops tops was still the number one guy the unique thing too about if you open these packs tops had the gum fleer would have baseball logo stickers the thing of the Don Russ would be puzzle pieces of yep. players. And it would always, it would usually be like like legends. And um, and this particular one, 1990, the puzzle is of Carl Yastrzemski, the grandfather of current uh, San Francisco Giants star Mike Yastrzemski. Let's give a shout out to Mike Yastrzemski and Giants fans. Yeah, he hit game. a he hit a grand slam last night to win the game. There you go. That's a nice little bonus. Cheers to him. Um, but the night that this airs, I'm actually seeing San Francisco, Toronto. At Rogers Center, so that'll be fun. So no, maybe I'll see him in another Grand Slam there. So um, mine again. There's a Juan Gonzalez rookie and Larry Walker are two of the rookies look for in here. And otherwise, um, usually nowadays these cards aren't worth very much. You need like a card that looks so perfect you would send it to PSA and get it graded. And they mostly be like legends, like a Nolan Ryan or a uh, Don Adley, something like that. But also it would be a second year Ken Griffey Jr. here. Now I want you to look. Here's how wax this is. Look, you see this is stuck. Can you see that? Look, it's stuck. I'm like literally my oh, camera yeah. right now doing this. Um, one thing I do enjoy about the um, the Donner's cards. I'll show you the first one in a second. Let's. Uh, here's our. I have two packs. So here's Carl. There you go. There's the Carl Shkretsky piece. So it's like a 72 piece. There's 63 pieces, and there's what the whole puzzle looks like. And you get three pieces per pack. And who knows if you together or not? You know, we'll see. So these aren't the. And this is what the card looks like. Not the prettiest of cards here. So this is Mike Kingery of the uh, the Seattle Mariners. And there's what the back looks like. So one thing there. I'm oh, sorry. Let me make sure this the right way. So look how it shows the full name nickname. So, oh, this is the guy from The Office. Oh, no. Mike, Mike's <laughs> Chris Scott. There you go. I guess he has a four name Kingery. So that's nice. So you get that. And you get, um, you know, his basic stats too. And uh, and it says like his contacts because we really need to know that and then career highlights and i always look for something like non-baseball related and i'm usually don't get unfortunate enough to do that the only thing i get here is like played collegiate baseball at st cloud uh minnesota state you know, okay. whatever. but yeah sure. these aren't these are not the pretty star arts here something interesting too if we find the juan gonzalez there's actually a rare error of his rookie that actually is a reverse negative so oh, if wow. i left-handed that's a very rare negative like reverse negative print of the card, which that's interesting. So wow, uh, I I I I'm gonna have to get this card. I need a couple of have to come back so we can look at one of these cards because I I want to see what he's gonna say about this picture. John, I, I'm like, oh, he had to just leave right now. Oh, there he is. Good, Cowboy Jack. I want you to tell me what is going on in this photo of Kenneth. Or should I say Ken Brian Patterson? What do you think's going on in that? Photo? <clears throat> Shaggy wrote a song about it, saying it wasn't me. His wife just walked in and caught him on the bathroom floor. <laughs> Ken Patera <laughs> Patterson just got caught in the act of cheating. It wasn't me. There you go. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that because I don't have any fun facts. But that's Shaggy. one thing I, I do like look for. Sometimes I'll find some great fun facts, but you know what? Jack gave the best fun fact we'll have about that gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> um, a very good shortstop who just keep it going. This is a very good shortstop on the. Uh, oh, I love it! It's Octavio Antonio Fernandez. But you can call him Tony. It literally says oh, Octavio yes. on the back. Wow! And I believe he didn't he pass away like last year, Michael. Do you remember? Oh, potentially. Let me. I'll look him up real quick. I thought he did, but oh, I hate. So I hate to. Is this nineteen ninety? Yes, it These is. Cards sir. are nine, dude. The the font is just. It's like Miami Vice. Tony Fernandez, yeah. like yeah, Tony he Fernandez. died. In, uh, Octavio, uh, Tony, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I thought I read that he passed away. I was like, oh, this yeah, is so sad to see. Hey, All right, we have do? one that well, hopefully live forever. All right, we're gonna move on here to speaking of someone who's gonna live forever. Michael Von Dragon, you talk about a veteran in baseball. Is this guy right here, Julio Cesar Franco? Yes. This guy was literally coaching in Korean baseball in 2020. I don't know if he was still batting or not, but. This guy was a guy who was like Phil Negro played into his at least 47. Yeah, really? he, does, like, he doesn't guy, have a snake around his neck, yeah. though. No snake. Yeah, exactly. We were talking about, yes, we were talking about earlier, yep. 
Yep. And I was hoping I could find some fun facts about it. But again, these are all baseball stats. We don't need to know about baseball stats. We don't care about baseball. <laughs> yep. No, I, I mean, we're looking for more. We're looking for more than that here at the Bay Brook. All right, here we have a, uh, a, vet, a guy who would be a better infielder, Glenn Allen Hill, here for oh, the, yeah. uh, the Blue Jays. Yep. Outfielder. I thought he played the infield too as well, but there you go. Pretty good player he, he, there. I only remember, remember I know he, he hit there. that home run at Wrigley Field for the Cubs. That one that um, ah, we talked about that. There's a famous video. Like you can't even tell if it's fair or foul. He hit it so far. <laughs> That's the like one that know. went on the uh, the rooftop. That's the one yes. on the rooftop. We actually talked about in the last episode. The show. So it was there we go. Good timing. So fun fact about Glenn Allen Hill. I thought his middle yes. name was Allen. <laughs> that's that's a, I, a common assumption. I, a guy who does have a middle uh, middle name is John Daniel Morris, who looks like he's at spring training here. And I don't know. I don't know what's going oh, on. Here. He looks, I have he looks no very idea happy who to make John him. Morris is. Right. Yeah, bro. John and you're a Cardinal Allen. fan, ah, dude. Oh, you know him when. When that guy walks into a party, people cover their drinks. Like that dude has a, <laughs> he's got a look about him. I uh, love it. So um, uh, a thing that was uh, pretty famous for Don Russ, and it's still on to this day because Don Russ, there are still Don Russ cards you can buy. They're part of the Panini Company. You look for it's called the Rated Rookie, and unfortunately, this ended up not being a great Rated Rookie. But this is a picture of Alex Sanchez on the Blue Jays, who I have no recollection. So. Mm-hmm. He was a rate rookie, but he wasn't rated very high, unfortunately. But, you know, hey, he went hey, to UCLA, can't, they, good player. but they, they can't all be winners, Kevin. Yeah. They can't all be winners. Babe. But you know what? If you get your own major league professional card, you've made it, all right? Sure. You did make it. Of course. It. Some of may have further than others. Um, uh, the other famous thing about uh, Donruss baseball cards was, is what this is right here. This is called the Diamond Case. This is the guy who came with the artwork here. So Ooh. in each set, usually there would be um, one Diamond King for a player from each major league team every year. So it'd be John Smoltz here for the Braves. And this is pretty early for Smoltz, if I remember right. This is, <laughs> And I love they tell the story about him being traded because you're aware he was a joint Tiger first, right? Michael Mondragon. Right. He got drafted by the Tigers, yes. right? Yes. It gives a little bit of, of information on him, but I just want to appreciate the artwork. And I was hoping the six on there is Perez is the guy's last name, but I can't remember his first name, but. I don't remember if it's the same guy the whole run of the Don Risk baseball cards. It's too bad the Diamond Kings aren't still around anymore, because that's a fun thing. Yep. I remember this guy as an angel, but definitely at a peak as a I want to say, uh, Red was, Sox uh, also. With, but with the A's. The team, well, the A's, thank you. He was a very good power. This guy's name is Tony. Uh, hang on. Let me his name properly. Antonio Rafael Armas from Venezuela. A good yes. home run power. Here. Okay, are you ready for this? Go I'm going to stop you right here, because... I saw this as a trivia question that he has four body parts, toe, knee, arm, ass. (laughs) (laughs) That's wonderful. That's actually a trivia question that I was going to throw in at at some point. I didn't know how to do it. And I I just use it just now. Thank you. Thank you. Well and, done. Uh, what well you done. Do about Donruss. I'll show this again because it doesn't show. It just says recent. It doesn't show their entire stat line. But if you can see there, he at this point he had 251 career home runs. So that's a good amount of home runs. Yeah. He didn't always hit for average. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. I saw the Angels. He put. Yeah, he's he a good put all the here. he put all the arms and ass into those swings. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> uh, thank you. Now if we're talking about. A perennial player in sports in 1990. There's only one man who knows it all. You know that, right? That would be Vincent Edward Jackson. There we go. Oh, we know that Bo oh. knows baseball. We know Bo nice. knows football. But Bro. Bo doesn't know Diddley. Bo doesn't know Diddley. Don't walk on oh, that That's true. We, we need to do the stuff that they do on the card opening shows where they just go nuts and start screaming. I mean, oh. you just – Oh! Oh, let's go! Oh, Bo Jackson! Well done, dude. That's one for the PC, bro. That is one for the PC. And actually, you know what? This actually, I think this is, I have to see, it, it's a little off center, but it was like a perfect card. I said to PSA, actually, I mean, if I got, you have to get 10 on it, which would be like a perfect mint card. 
it would be it actually be worth something. It actually would be worth something. Oh my gosh, we not we, worth as to... much, unfortunately, is pitcher Greg Harris from uh, Aww, the police academy. Isn't that Lieutenant Harris? Greg Harris, his <laughs> name. But this is Greg Harris from the Padres. Deep pool, dude. I'm just going to use references to go up my 90 cards. I'm trying to see. If, oh, I thought he had a, a some facial hair back in the day. Nope, he's clean shaven. I'm sure for you know keep himself in, you know keep himself in, obviously. All right, Kevin. Next right, big pool, here. Ne- next big card that you pull, we're gonna go nuts. All right. All right. Don't worry. I, we'll, we'll see if I get anything here. It's unfortunately not gonna be this guy with that sweet stash, Walt Terrell here. Ah, His name is yo, Paul. let's go. Boom, 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 baby, boom. <laughs> what's a, oh, what's a, that, what, that's that, a, how I was supposed to react? I'm sorry. Is that, is but it, that's is Walter that Terrell. Not? Charles Walter Terrell with the sweet stash. From the- who names their uh, kid Walter? No, like, no, that's you his middle carry- No, I, who it's can- even worse. Yeah. It's even worse, Jack. His name's Charles. Bro, his you middle carry name is Walter, a child. And he- Jack, can you let me finish? Please? His name is Charles. His middle name is Walter. He went by Walt. That's awesome. Hey, shut you down. That was a hot, hot take, dude. Hot take. I'm just, I'm just letting you know here. We have an all star here. All star catch up with the San Diego Padres, but Nito Santiago. Yeah. Good player. Good player. Yeah, very good. Why player. does he have a why does he have a gold star next to his name? Was he just one of the good ones? Is it like he worth his all star? I said an all star. Oh, uh, that's why the gold star. I, and that's all-star? why the National League gold is star. So an all star. Wow, that's that's why that Bo Jackson card said MVP. Man, the design oh, on yeah. these cards is awesome. I, as a graphic designer, Michael, how do you feel about the design on these cards? It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's very, it's very of the time. Very, very of the time. <laughs> yeah. very, that, that's the word. That's yes. a word for sure. Yes. All right, bro. I yeah, guarantee I you, there's yeah. companies these days that would be like, you know, we just want that '90s Donruss feel. You yeah. know, like which, which I could do in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you got All it. right, we have an American here. We have an American hero here. Ooh. I believe he's on the '80 Olympic team. I'm trying to find my notes here. I actually take it back. He was going to be on the '88 uh, Olympic team, but he decided to turn pro. This is Grosin. With that jacket. Oh, I thought it was Robin Ventura, That's, dude. You got me all excited. No. <laughs> I thought it was all gonna right. be Kurt Angle. <laughs> he passed up on he passed up on Olympic gold to get in a major to get in really baseball. He's actually a really good uh reliever for the Orioles, but that yep. sweet jacket, man. Yeah, that sweet jacket. Yeah, you best you want to know part. he does have a sweet jacket, but you want to know what he doesn't have? An Olympic gold medal like Robin Ventura. Mm. Boom. Mm. That's right. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so in the is this guy a baseball player cap cowboy jack i want to look at ron kittle here in 1990 wow baseball player. check out ron look kittle does he does he have his yeah, glasses on in the glasses. picture i can't tell yeah 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 i don't see if you can see yeah i'm sorry yes. can't get the best looker, but he does have the glasses yeah. on that's why i'm saying he's only he's born 58 so he was 31 years old when this photo was taken and living a good life all right we have a man we talked about many times Future almost manager of the Arizona Diamondbacks, then had to go into hiding. Mr. Wally Backman on the Twins. Yes. Oh, the twin. one for oh. the PC. Yo, hey. let's go. You know why we're <laughs> celebrating? Because he is on, he's been on the ballot for the Baseball Brew Crew Diamond Icon. Yes. And, and I think has he made it yet? For that. He, has not, he has not made it. And also, Mel Finchman is also still on the ballot. Yes. Yeah, there, there's yes. a there's a reason that old Bachwinkle hasn't made it because uh, <laughs> that '90s Donruss card. That's why. All right. <laughs> yep. All right, I got one more. Should we do one more? Should I do this quick? Yes. Let's do it. Do it. Going quick here. I got one. I had two of these. So just tone low. We got all night apparently. I still have half a beer. Oh, let's see if I can rip a card with this. Oh, sorry. Should I see the opening part of this? Much, God, much, sorry. much like much like Prince used to say. Let's do it. <laughs> did, did, did Prince say that? I'm sure he Prince did. That, like wow. at least once, right? <laughs> yeah, look, at, did. look at that sticking. Look at the stick. Look at that sticking. Oh, let, me, let me get the full yeah. effect of that. Look at that. That's something you don't get with with current cards, right there. Yeah. Right? That that beauty of. I mean, you, <laughs> you, young... you in tops, you get gum stains. Some of yes. the wax sticks to the card. Wow, oh, that's I'm about, to, I'm about to make a five thousand. I'm about to damage a five thousand dollar card. Ready? 
<laughs> oh, ooh. oh, that's no. smart. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Wait, no. did I tell you that card was? That's a tease. Got, we thought, ladies. That's that a tease. You got to wait till the end, Daddy. And there you go. You can say he's a Hall of Famer, Carly Strensky. There's my puzzle piece. And actually, I, I'm like, oh, I have to see if those connect together. Ooh, there's another tease, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're starting off with a that's, Yankee. That's real exciting audio is do these puzzle pieces fit together? Everybody tune into the Baseball Brew Crew <laughs> for our riveting audio of puzzle pieces going together. <laughs> Maybe. Speaking of, rivet, speaking of riveting audio, let's take this. Let's take a look at this card of Arvado Alberto Espinoza on the Yankees, who I've never heard of. Look at that. Man, you started out really Latino, but you ended up really white, dude. You were like, oh, Bravo Espinosa, I think. Espinosa, yeah, exactly. is that how you say it? <laughs> Guys, I don't know. I Because I looked at this and I realized, who is this He's guy? I've never heard of him. <laughs> All right. A Philly here, we know him also as a Met. This is Roger McDowell. Oh, on yeah. Six Mets. That's right. A uh, very good pitch, very good relief pitcher in this time yep. period for sure, to say the least. Yeah. All right. Fun fact Let's about see. Roger McDowell: his friends used yes. to call him Raj. That was his nickname. Was Raj? <laughs> yeah. They were like, "Hey, Raj." Let me see. Just fun fact from Jackie Ball Game. You know, because I know everything about baseball. That's what I do. <laughs> oh, there it is, right here on his card. It says his yeah. nickname is Raj. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Man, I need some brewers here. Guys, we're going to Yankees and Blues. You're like, another Blue Jay I never heard of. Charles Maggie. Douglas Carey. Oh. No, Carey. Uh, yeah. Oh, Chuck uh, Carey. Yeah. Yeah, he played Chuck baseball. Carey. Charles T. Yeah, he played yeah. baseball. Yeah. On the yes. Yankees. Yeah. Yeah. His who has, who oh, hasn't played ball in the Yankees? And, he, and much like Ch Cowboy Jack, he's, he, he throws the screwball. There you go. Oh. Yeah, oh. All right, we have here um, God, the most exciting cards today. We have Ron Robinson from the Reds. Wow, dude. Represent? <laughs> the Ron Robinson? The yes, Ron, the Ron Robinson. Robinson. That's not like that's not the guy that's dating your mom, dude. No, that's Ron Robinson. All right. <laughs> Cincinnati Reds great. Look at that photo, I would say I just admire that photo. Obviously, you got, there's no hey, Mark shots and no facial hair. <laughs> so i know you guys aren't cincy fans but i'm gonna just clue you in here in 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 this lore of cincinnati baseball you have pete rose johnny bench and then a close third is ron robinson i mean he is right there <laughs> cowboy jack did the three reds that he knows. Good job. Jack. Yes, I can actually. I can actually right, double. Go to, I, think I know who he is. He, he was on the Pirates, I believe. But I, I'm, oh, I'm, no. please, Kevin, continue, please. <laughs> All right, I was gonna look, but it only said Reds and Resistory. All right, we're not gonna talk about. We have a catcher here on the uh, Toronto Blue Jays, who I'm gonna be seeing very soon. Not Isla Borders, Michael Mondragon, Pat Borders. I'm throwing a deep cut at you, if I look Yes, a great. He was. During those uh, early 90s um, Toronto Blue Jays World Series teams. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's 1990. So a couple years later, they were winning the World Series. All right. Yep. A guy who was one of my least favorite angels because he had to replace one of my favorite players of all time, Rod Brew. Wally World, here's Wallace Keith Joyner. Nice. Angels. That, I, that nice. guy I'm not as fond of. He's okay, though. Sounds like a job. One of my to me. favorite names. In <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's the second best Wally in Orange County. Wally George is the number one Wally in Orange County forever. <laughs> All right, one of my favorite names in baseball. And you got to love the the beautiful Montreal Expos jersey. This is Spike Owen. That is Spike legit. Owen. Wow. Spike D. Owen. Shortstop. Oh! <laughs> I, Actually, shortstop. oh, get, get ready. Get, oh, I got a backwards card. I got two backwards cards. That means something, right? Look. I have cards that are backwards in my back. Does that Low mean print. Worth something? Low print. No. <laughs> I have sure. something that actually might be worth something. I actually okay. have something that might be worth something, so I'll save that for last, all right? Okay. Here we have <laughs> all the photos you can get of this guy. I love that Willie Randolph, as a Dodger, has this little thing in low. It's, it's like this deep as you know, <laughs> He's got his cheaters. Yeah, his cheaters. <laughs> cheaters. I don't remember what they call that. His cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really wonderful <laughs> late '80s, early '90s cast. Very good, very good. Cheer, Willie Randolph. I want to. I'm gonna take a sip of your for Willie Randolph. 
That's one of my backwards cards. That's why that's a special card. Yeah, he was <laughs> eventually the manager of the Mets, right? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So my other backwards card is a favorite of yours, for sure, Michael Mondragon. Favorite of the show, too. This guy, at, at this point, he's a pirate, but you know him as a cardinal. Mr. Andy Van Sly. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's done. I knew, I knew you'd appreciate that one. Yeah. That guy on your world champion uh, 85 Cardinals team. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that loud? No, no, no. He, I he, know. I, he I know. Threw, I'm he, kidding. He actually, the, the ball kidding. was hit the right. By uh, Dane Iorg and and, uh, and he yeah, threw. Yeah, I know. I'm just being a smart Alec. That's funny. You know, I'm sorry. Did, he was, did he I just was, say was, your team won? No, they lost to the Royals. Who loses the Royals? Dude? But but th right. then then he was the he was still the right fielder for the Pirates when they lost to the Braves. Yep, and hip. Yeah, gosh, he got so close, but never got never got the big one. Oh well. Exactly. All right. Uh, a guy, uh, so we have Reds, I forgot. So this is the Reds win the World Series this year. So I, I would guess that Todd Bezinger gets a wow. ripping in 1990 as a member of the Reds along with Ron Robinson. How about that? All right. Nice. All right, we have a Dodger here. Another Dodger with a wonderful stash. Look at this, Lenny Harris. There you go. Not, no, uh, yeah, no relation to Lenny Bruce, I would assume, right? Lenny Harris here. <laughs> right. I, I just so. love the stash and the jersey and the look. It's looking good. Looking good. Oh, this, I, I have another card I need Cowboy Jack here for, but we'll, we'll keep going here. You oh, rang? You go, Jack. <laughs> yes, I did, because I have a card here of a gentleman by the name of Eric Shaw who gave up number 4,190 second hit to... The hit king, Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose, daddy. Good job. Yes. Good job here for that. And, and, I got and four what more cards, so let's... Yes, sir. <clears throat> And what, what did he do while Pete Rose celebrated and Marshot drove a car onto the field? What did Eric Shaw do? Ah, uh, he probably walked off the field, dude. I mean, no. what do you do? He, he took a shower. He did he jump in the car? No, he just <laughs> – that would have been – like. That would have been no, great. Man, Instead, he sat on the mound and no. just almost kind of in a sulking oh, right. pose. Really, dude? He got <laughs> yes. all pouty? In, in, wait. Yes. In a sulking pose or a uh, – can you hit the button, please? Wah. No, I want a wham. <laughs> wah. Wah. <laughs> yes. In a wham yes. pose. All right. Show us those cards. All right. Let me finish up. I got – Jeez, I got 50 cards here. We ain't got all night. So this is Billy Swift from the Seattle Mariners. I did not get one single brewer today. This is not okay. Uh, let's see here. It says he's a pitcher, but you wouldn't think he's a pitcher by this picture. Melito Perez. It looks like he's playing the infield. Yeah, Because you know, he's real. on the very edge of the mound. Yeah. Like the picture, like this picture, this photograph of this picture is taken that he's about to make a play in the field. That's kind of weird. All right. And hey, you'll like this, uh, Michael Ondragon, which I didn't know this. I read this card. He is the younger brother of Pasquale Perez. That would that? make sense. I was going to ask. I did not know that. So there you go. Yeah. So my card that got stuck to the pack and Ford might be damaged is, and it is damaged. There's a, there's a tear on the back of this, is Steve Bouchelle. So <laughs> there, goes my, there, goes, there goes my retirement plan. Whoa, no way, dude. Look at that mullet, bro. Yeah. I know. That's a wonderful mullet. That looks like a ball player. That's a wonderful mullet. But, ladies and gentlemen, I actually have a card that actually might be worth something. It's a slightly off center, but I actually got, look at this, a second year Ken Griffey oh, wow. Jr. Diamond game. Oh, wow. This is actually man. one of the top 10 cards in the set. So there we wow, go. That's okay. a nice card. I might have to, it's the off center, so I, it, I, might, I might have to get the standing game. Yeah, you got you to gotta drop that in the mail, brother. <laughs> or I can deliver to him in person because I, I hope to see him in uh, in early to the Rough Riders game. So you know what to put that out there. If you're in that area, you actually can get discount tickets uh, through Angelo. Okay, Good and times. also thanks for hanging out. Starting any Brewers, but I got this sweet Ken Griffey Jr. card. Cheers, folks. Love it. Also, if you're attending the Rough Riders game that Kevin and Angelo are going to be attending together, Kevin will buy your beer all night. So wow. if you're if you're in Texas, swing in. You <laughs> use the promo code hashtag Angelo, and Kevin Lyon himself will announce the date soon. We'll buy beer all night. He's buying beer for the entire stadium. A uh, Jack, Jack. I, I um, quick note. Um, the deal is that we're hoping that people will buy Kevin beer. Oh, 
it, so it's, it's a little bit of reverse of what you got. Got it. All right. So Let take me two. Take, two. take two. If you're there at the Frisco oh, Rough Riders game, you get to buy Kevin beer all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, when will you be uh, in Texas? I'm going to be the, the first weekend of August. Uh, I let me make sure I have the date right. I believe I I'm planning to be at the uh, Frisco Riders game on Friday, August fourth for sure, and potentially August fifth as well. I still have to figure out my plans. I'm also going to go to Texas Rangers game either Saturday, August fifth. Or and for sure, the August six for sure, I'll be going to the Rangers. So get another ballpark checked off my checklist. I got like four new stadiums this summer: two minor league, two major league. Nice. nice well, now that I know that, maybe I could uh, try to figure out something for myself. Hopefully, maybe I can make some magic happen. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, again, I have a lot of places that I can go uh, in the next two months. So uh, Puerto Rico being one of them. Puerto Rico have a lot not of good one of them. in Puerto Rico. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Puerto Rico not being one of them, uh, but uh, or Cuba, you could go and uh, watch some Sugar League games. That, that's that's true, guys. By the way, I just knew Sugar League. Like that's a deep pull. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> well, uh, you know, you're learning more about baseball every week, and we're so proud yeah. of you. That's why they call but, me Jackie Ball heart, Game, but- Kevin. But you know what? I'm more hap- I'm happier when you actually remember some things. Like I'm like, you remember who Robin Majura was tonight? I didn't know if you remember him. Oh yeah, yeah no, he, he put his head down. Don't charge the mound and put your head down, dude. Keep your head up yeah. and get them dukes up, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, you get it. I you get, get it. it. <laughs> you re- well, you remember? I remember. You remember? Bro. You remember. <laughs> well, well, what is going on here? Dude, what, we are looking at know. a whole like, screen. Oh. Of just hotness. <laughs> <laughs> it's the plugs. Well, we have gone an hour and a half, 90 minutes of beer and baseball. Um, we are on all the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Guys, any last words before we sign off for this week? This has been amazing. All right. I want to go first because I want to say if you um, are interested in what I'm going to be into, because like I said, when you watch this, I'm going to be in Toronto watching – uh, Toronto Blue Jays for the Giants game. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lockmull, L-O-K-N-L-O-L-L. Also, please follow us on, on the Baseball Brew Crew. Look at us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, because I can be doing a lot while I'm in Canada. I got Blue Jays games planned. We're going to be going to Vancouver Canadian games. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, the, 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 dream, the baseball dream part is that I will be going to the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame which is like a two hour drive from Toronto. I'm still trying to figure that out. And if I can pull it off, I'm going to be spending a day. Hope for the best. And Hey, for those who want a new book to read, go to beerbaseball.com, Click on the Amazon affiliate. Look up the book called the greatest game ever pitched. And you can get a book about that July 2nd, 1963 game pitched between Juan Marisol and Warren spot. Oh, wow. It's already on. Buy whatever you want. Amazon. Yeah. Buy whatever wow. you want. On Amazon, it's not going to cost extra, but it gives a little kickback to the blog. So, thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Jack. I will say this. If you're watching or listening to this show and you haven't found us on social media or subscribed to us, you're a nerd and you're a loser. We are the Diamond Exchange. We are the crown jewel of craft beer and baseball. This is the Baseball Brew Crew Every week for three years straight and not stopping, we bring you unadulterated baseball facts, unadulterated craft beer facts, and unadulterated humor. You're missing out if you're not watching. Like, subscribe. You're welcome. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Guys, it has been another amazing, amazing episode. 164 in the books. And uh, hey, we're not stopping. We'll have another one next week. Kevin, you're going to be in uh, O Canada. Jack, we'll have you here. We're going to do it again, all over again next Tuesday. So thank you from the Baseball Brew Crew. We will see you next Tuesday with another episode. Take care. Good night. Good night.